hi everyone welcome back to sugar mama tv i am canna campbell i hope that you are safe i hope that you are well no matter where you are in the world right now Today I want to talk to you about budgeting and cash flow. The key to budgeting and cash flow is consistency. When it's consistent and it is the same thing every fortnight or every month, it makes it really easy to manage your cash flow and to stick to your budget. What I find makes things really hard financially or gives us a bit of a punch in the guts financially or, you know, I guess makes us become unbalanced with our budget is when we get a bill out of surprise or we conveniently or accidentally forget an upcoming annual bill such as Christmas time or when our car rego is due or when we suddenly need new tires for our car. But when we have consistency and we proactively and mindfully manage our cash flow and prepare for these events, it makes life so much smoother and it means it's much easier to stick to our budget and it makes it even more exciting because we can actually factor into our budget some lifestyle and financial goals. Now, previously I have shared with you my technique for how to manage your cash flow, and I will be making a new version of this, but today's version is actually for people who are self-employed, earning commission, seasonal workers and shift workers and freelancers. Because for these people, quite often it's really hard and challenging to manage your cash flow. But with this technique that I've designed, it's actually not impossible. This makes it so much easier. And the reason why it's harder, because you may go through times in your life where you're earning lots of money in large lump sums as a freelancer or a contractor or being self-employed or even doing shift work. But then you'll also go through periods of your life where it's a drought. You're not earning any new income and it makes it really hard to kind of scramble and manage all of your ongoing expenses, let alone any new expenses that come out of the blue. Now, the technique that I'm about to share with you is called the drip feed, and it is all mastered by the mothership account. And the reason why I recommend this technique is because I do it myself. You see, I am self-employed. I run my own business and I know how hard it is to manage your cash flow when you don't have a set salary that comes into your account every month where your tax has already been you know, taken out for you so you don't need to worry about the responsibility. So this really works. And whenever I have shared this technique with anyone, which I've been sharing for years and years, they have always found it to be invaluable. And it takes out so much stress in people's lives because it's like you're almost an employee again, but you still have all the amazing flexibility of being self-employed. I'm really excited about sharing this with you right now. However, if you want to know about this technique in more detail and be able to refer to it, I highly recommend grabbing a copy of Mindful Money because I share with you this very valuable diagram on pages 74 and 75 of Mindful Money. And I also explain it in a lot more detail. But let me share with you essentially how this works and how it really helps simplify all of your cash flow stresses and problems. Now, before I begin, it's going to take a while to set up this system. It's going to take a little bit of practice to get used to it. And you may need to make some of your personal tweaks to this strategy so that it works for you. And that is perfectly fine. But also to set this up, you may need to rely on some separate savings that you've already got allocated in, say, a savings account or even an emergency account to allow you some time to set this up and let it work for you. So just please bear that in mind. Now, first of all, we have one key account. This is your most important account that you need to be checking on a regular basis, and that is your mothership account. This is where all of your income gets deposited. All of your bonuses, all of your commissions, all of your invoices get paid, all of your seasonal work, every single dollar that you earn gets put into this one account, your mothership account. And that account collects all the money for 30 days. You're not allowed to take any money out of this account. In the meantime, you live off that emergency savings or that separate savings account that you've previously established. Now, when you get through to the end of the 30 day period, you add up all the money and you work out how much money you need to be paying to the ATO 
and how much money you need to be putting aside for your retirement planning. So if you're in Australia, this is your superannuation account. If you're in New Zealand, this is your Kiwi saver. If you are in America, this is your 401k plan. And if you're in Europe, this is your pension plan. Now, before you do this, you work out what is the amount of money that you need to live off after tax to get you through your month accordingly. How much money do you need as a minimum to pay all of your bills? So you do need to do your own budget. Now to show you how this works, I'm gonna give you an example. Say I've previously done my budget and I know that I need a minimum of $6,000 per month to make sure I can pay my rent, put food on the table, pay all my utilities, and of course, you know, be able to catch up with friends and maybe buy an item of clothing each month or whatever my lifestyle involves. So I know that I need at least $6,000 per month to be able to keep my head above water. But also into that budget, I've factored in a regular investment plan for my financial goals and a lifestyle goal such as saving up for a holiday. That's all factored into that $6,000 per month. Now, say during the 30-day period, I've collected, say, $10,000 in, in business revenue. What I will simply do is pay, for example, $3,000 into a separate savings account nicknamed my tax money. Or I will simply go and pay that money to the ATO directly so that I know I've paid it and I'm not worrying about any ATO bills that might be outstanding. Now, this is something you can really easily do by using just simply the biller code that the ATO give you. Otherwise, just put it into a separate savings account and you can pay your tax as it comes through quarterly. The second payment you must put through, as I said, is to your retirement savings account, or I should say retirement investing account, because it's not savings, it's an investment portfolio. Now, in Australia, if you're self-employed, you don't actually have to put money in your superannuation account. However, I highly recommend you do this as a priority. You will never regret doing this because the more money you have in your superannuation account, the more luxurious and longer your retirement is going to be. And the earlier and the more regularly you do this, the more opportunities your money has to grow because of the power of compounding interest working for you. So please, if you can, put money into your superannuation account. So in this example, I'm gonna transfer the 9.5%. So $950 we paid to my superannuation account, and I will do this every single month. Now this leaves me a net figure of $6,050. Now with that $6,050, I transfer this money to my everyday savings account. Now this is like I am actually an employee of my own business. I'm treating myself like a salaried employee. And I now know that I have prioritized the responsibility of paying my taxes, putting money aside for my retirement, and this is the money that I can then live off. Now, I would then distribute this $6,050 as per my normal recommended cash flow budgeting instructions. And I will link in the video description box below the other video where I shared this with you. But as a quick recap of how this works, I will put a certain amount of money, for example, say $3,000 into my everyday savings account. I would put, say, $2,000 into my Life Plus emergency money, which is where it acts as a financial float to help me plan and prepare for Christmas time, you know, my car rego, um, any like ad hoc annual expenses or biannual expenses that are quite expensive. And of course, there's a component in there that's emergency money. And then the two other accounts are my lifestyle goal accounts, such as having you know, a holiday, and of course my financial goal account. So I would distribute that $6,050 into those four accounts accordingly. And I would learn to make sure I'm checking it on a regular basis and sticking to my budget. Now, this is where there's a couple of hacks or tricks or potentially traps that come in. There may be months, for example, where I earn more than $10,000 for that month. And there may be times where I don't earn $10,000 for the month, maybe even nothing at all. But this is where you've got to be really careful. You've got to allow your mothership to collect the money. And as tempting as it may be when I earn money that's you know, more than my normal you know, salary after tax to take extra money as a bonus or a pay rise, I'm not allowed to do that. I must allow the mothership to build up to a significant substantial amount that makes me feel really comfortable. So that I know in my business, if I go for, say, three to six months without any pay or new revenue or new jobs that come in, I can keep drip feeding myself 
at $6,050 per month and I continue on paying to the ATO. Now, if there's ever a risk where I'm overpaying my tax, that's okay because it's going to come back to me as a refund from the ATO when I do my taxes at the end of the financial year. Also, by seeing the money build up over time, it means I don't need to ever worry about being stuck for money. I've always got, as I said, those three to six months worth of salary up my sleeve in this account. And this is why it's so important that you build up a, you know, a little, I guess, kitty of money to help you set this up because it does take at least a couple of months to get used to. But I promise you, once you invest the time and the energy in doing this, in doing a budget for your business, doing a budget for your own personal expenses, and you treat yourself like a salaried employee using this drip feed technique and using your mothership, I guarantee is going to make life so much easier for yourself. And you're going to feel really responsible and in control. Now, as I said, don't forget to grab a copy of Mindful Money for pages 74 and 75, where I explain this. And there's also a really fantastic chart and graph for you to follow that makes it super easy. And of course, there are so many amazing wealth creation strategies shared with you in this book. Now, if you like this video, please feel free to go and share it. And don't forget to go and check your budget and make sure you're factoring in exciting financial goals for your future. Ciao for now.